Hey guys, um, if you haven't noticed lately, uh, lately my channel, first of all, it's Dragon Keeper 9600, hi. <laughs> Second of all, lately on my channel, I've been doing a dramatic reading of the abridged version of Les Miserables, this particular abridged version, which is 600 pages. I have a few announcements. First of all, today I went to the store and I bought myself the big one, the brick, yes. That sound was the sound of 1,400 plus pages hitting a wooden table. So I have that. Not going to read that to you because, oh my god, <laughs> I would shoot my voice forever if I tried that. And really, I don't have the time to sit down and read 400, 1,400 pages to you. So I'm still going to be reading this, which is much more manageable. But yeah, I've got it. So if I have anything I want to say from this, then I will hear me hitting it. Then I will do that. Anything to say? Well, that brings me to my next point. Um, this is the start of a brand new segment that I like to call Les Mis Editorial. <laughs> so, um, basically, Les Mis Editorial, I'll be talking about the chapter I just read, prob probably usually the previous day or whenever the last video was, and say something insightful about it if I have to. Now, this is sort of meant for, I guess, people who are interested, people who are studying the book, you know, for school, maybe like one of those spark notes things. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, last night I read the chapter The Fall, where we are introduced to Jean Valjean, and we learn about his plight, meaning that he was thrown in the slammer for five years for stealing loaf of bread, and then eventually had his sentence extended to 19 years. Now, what this raises, now the point that this raises is one that a few people have probably asked themselves, but don't get brought, probably doesn't get brought up that much in class discussions. And that point is this. Is Jean Valjean an idiot? I mean, really, folks. How many times does he escape from prison? Let's check here. Probably like, it was something insanely comical. Like, four or five times. And each time, he gets a few years added. The first time it doesn't work, why do you keep breaking out, dude? Just... Stay in prison. He just, when he gets to the end of 19 years, was he whacking himself on the head? Dude, 14 years ago, if you hadn't escaped, you'd be out by now. You'd be free a long time ago. That's a modern perspective on it. Anyway, but here's the thing. First of all, uh, we want to put this right out there that Jean Valjean is not an idiot. Le Victor Hugo says that very clearly early on. He was not an imbecile. Once he gets, I remember I saw like in the 1998 version, I think it was of this movie, one of the plot points was that Jean Valjean didn't know how to read. And I remember scratching my head thinking, oh, wait a minute, he's not illiterate because when he gets to prison, he actually, they allow the prisoners to be taught to read if they so desire. And he's one of the people who is willing. The natural light was enkindled in him. That's the quote. The thing is, though, Jean Valjean has never been, t never had a formal education outside of prison. So things like basic logic and common sense, probably a little outside his understanding. Maybe. That's a pretty big maybe. The second thing is, his family is starving, okay? They're not starving five years from now when he gets out. They are starving right now. Every second he spends in prison is a second wasted. Don't forget, he was one of the main people earning money from his family. And now that he's gone, his sister and her seven kids, mind you, in the cold winter with no food, are totally hosed. That's a few things. He doesn't have time to waste. And really, here's the next point. And this is a little bit more deep, I guess, <laughs> is the next thing is... The conditions in the prisons in, what is this, like 19th, 19th century France are pretty abysmal. There was hard labor, people got sick, horrible conditions, rape probably, you know, all kinds of shit happening. Now prison, if you were rich, was actually pretty decent because you could, if you were rich and in prison, you could still pay and get a nice room, get furniture tobacco if you asked for it you know you could live it up you just couldn't leave but you could have a pretty nice setup Jean Valjean is of a lower class so he couldn't afford any of that so yeah his conditions are pretty abysmal the thing is he wanted to get out so badly 
and right away that he wasn't willing to wait to the end of the sentence. And that raises a provocative question. Should prisons be places that people want to escape from? Should they? I mean, let's really think about it. Is the point of a prison to punish or to reform? Now, you can, this is a question that still gets asked by a lot of people, even nowadays, in the 21st century, in America. And depending on who you ask, you're going to get some very different answers. Some people say, well, they're criminals. They broke the law. Of course they should be punished. Other people say, it seems kind of a waste, isn't it? I mean, what is it, thousands of dollars we spend on housing people who are not going to contribute anymore to the world. I mean, prison is a pretty big money sink. And um, so, yeah, just punishing them is a waste on the economy and it's a waste of a human life. On the other, But some people, so what do we do instead? Well, there doesn't seem to be an easy answer. Uh, I'm not going to answer this question myself because, uh, honestly, it's a pretty loaded question and I'm not entirely sure what my perspective is on it. I mean, like I keep saying, this isn't easy. I mean, there's not an easy answer. Maybe someone smarter than me will come up with it something someday, but we hear all the time about how people go to prison and their lives are ruined forever. And maybe they actually are guilty of the crime they did, but since they've been to prison, they can never change their ways. They're, they have a criminal record. Once they get out, they can never get a job anywhere. So what is there to do except go back to crime? And that brings us to a motif that surrounds all of Les Miserables, which is that the punishments inflicted by society are not fixing problems, they are causing the problems that they were intended, perhaps, to fix. Let's think about Jean Valjean. Why did he steal? Because he was starving. It was the middle of winter. He had nine people, including himself, that he had to provide for, and he had no way to do it. The only reason he stole was because he was hungry. Once he stole, he was punished very harshly for it. And if you've seen the 2012 movie or the musical, you know now he's sort of got his own 19th century French version of a criminal record. He can't get a job anywhere. Hell, he can't even stay at an inn. Nobody wants him. And this is a, something you still see nowadays. Um, that's not the only example either. Let's look at Fantine who is a character who has not been introduced in my reading so far, but whom everyone who has seen the movie knows. This woman was not a bad person by any means. She was a good mother. She was kind. She was a little vain about her hair, but come on. I can sympathize with that. I mean, you know. She had no money. She had no parents. So what could she be vain about besides her hair? <laughs> right? That's not a terrible thing. But she was... Uh, branded a slut the moment that they found out about her daughter, little Cosette, because she had the gall to have a kid without getting married. Suddenly she can't get a job anywhere. Nobody wants her. She is deeply in debt because nobody wants her. And in the end, she's forced to become a prostitute. So what's the result of be being called a whore and a slut? Well, I don't want to say it, but she's forced to become a whore because they called her that. And it's very sad that she was reduced to that station that Victor Hugo calls a form of slavery. Because it is. Prostitution is basically slavery. It was back then, if it's not now. I don't know much about the prostitution scene nowadays. Nor do I wish to find out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. This is apparent with other characters, too. What about Javert? He's been in prison <laughs> all his life. Or at least from very early on. And why? For the crime simply of being born. He was born in prison. And that shaped his whole life. He it's pretty strongly implied, if not outright stated, he became a cop because of that. And you can see how that turned out for him. <laughs> so, yes. Does society have the right to crush its numbers? Cause problems that it's supposed to be solving? Well, Victor Hugo, who, what I would like to remind everyone, is a socialist, would say, no, they don't. This is a problem, and it needs to be fixed. And you will see this appear again and again and again in every, in every good adaption of Les Miserables you see. So, 
there you have it. That's my first Les Mis editorial. I uh, said 10 minutes worth of stuff. I'm pretty proud of myself. So, um, yeah, tune in for, uh, I'll read more of the story tomorrow if I get around to it. <laughs> it's Dragon Keeper 19600, signing off. Thank you.